Anybody? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Here we go. I'm down, bro. Hit this intro. Warning. This podcast is about the horror genre, specifically horror films. As most horror movies are filled with coarse language, violence, and or gore, the topics and language of the cast of the pod will also reflect the genre. If you have any issues with the aforementioned warnings, please press stop. However, if you have no issue with adult language, movie violence, or the accoutrement that accompanies horror films, please feel free to continue. You have been warned. How's it go? How's it go? You have been warned. Ah, oh, music to my ears. Yes, sir. <laughs> So everybody, welcome back to Cast of the Pod, the podcast where um, the three three of us friends, the, the the dream team, consisting of myself, Cop Web, and Deb, we get together and we talk about movies that we've, even if they're they're brand new to us, movies or they're from movies from back in the day. We we're not a traditional review podcast, you know. We we talk about the emotions that come up with us. As Deborah's looking at her dog, is our dog over there beating up the other dog? Yeah. Uh oh. So um, today we're following on on what we've been doing the past couple of weeks. We've got special guest hosts with us, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring them on over here. I don't know why I'm acting like I had to hit any buttons. One the dolls already here with us. <laughs> like, right. I'm trying to figure out what are you doing. <laughs> I was thinking about if I was going to say, I was thinking about if I was going to say this whole intro, Cobweb got us this nice, we were just talking about it in the pre-talk right now, this nice paragraph going, One Dial told us all this information that's great too, and I don't want to miss out on none of it or anything like that. Wonder Dial, how are you doing, sir? Um, Everything is good, man. Everything is great. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, two weeks ago, we had MERS on the podcast. Last week, we had Jason Soto, also known as Cookbook, on the podcast. Today, oh, man. Today, we have one to dial. And let me see if I, let me go through this right here. He's half of the mighty Black Mavericks crew. They've got three EPs out, Commercial Break, Quarantine Blessings, and Branches of the Same Tree. And I kind of messed up with Merge, kind of messed up with, with Cookbook, and we didn't put out their information at the beginning. So that's why we're doing this right now. Those three EPs you can find on their Bandcamp page and all streaming platforms also. Um, not only is he an MC, but he's a DJ. At, oh, you, you, you've DJed at Bank of America Stadium. That must have been something. It was all right. It was all right. <laughs> yeah, I used to uh, oh, yeah. DJ with yeah. Panthers. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, man, this dude being humble. And no, right here, he's DJed for President Obama. You know what? You know what? You need to quit. Okay. <laughs> that. And then also, he's a founding member of the Gray Skull Crew. And they help, they, they help build sustainable spaces for mental health and community using hip hop as a bridge. Yes, sir. And also, Bam. also we've met one to dial through the Felipe's Garage Mechanics Lounge, and the, the friendship, the com camaraderie, the brotherhood that is mechanicism. Or we're, we're yeah, us, all of us. Absolutely. So, can we spark mad mechanicism? Is that possible? Ah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> De so, Deb's got that look on her face like, oh, they're going to talk about Felipe's garage. Josh never <laughs> shuts up about that shit. I, I see it in her face already. I ain't say anything. Hey, hey, this is cast of the pot. You know, <laughs> this is cast of the pot. So, so one to dial. Let me ask you, did you see um, Cobb Webb's recommendation of Near Dark? I did. I actually watched it today. Awesome. Awesome. So it's still fresh in your mind. Deb and I caught it yesterday. Cobweb, how many times have you seen it already? This week, two. Oh, shit. So you said this week, two, so that means you've seen it multiple times before? Yes. Oh, shit. So, so I think it's going to be one of those podcasts. Um, usually when Cobweb and I don't, don't, um, and, and Deb don't agree about a movie, it, it, it the, 
the podcast ends up being kind of fire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when, when, when we feel exactly the same about a, a movie, then it's like, eh, okay, yeah, we like the movie. And then we just, we bullshit about other stuff and pot about other stuff. All right. So um, I don't know if you've heard us before, Wonder Dial. But I've um, to times. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Oh, you know, you. we're not traditional where we start at the beginning. And there's spoilers all the way throughout the podcast. Sometimes we jump straight to the end. And right when we're about to end the podcast, we're like, oh, you remember that part right at the beginning of the movie? And then we talk another 15 minutes. You know, so um, feel free to, to jump in, throw in anything you want at any time. Cobweb. Um, I'm going to get this out in the open. All right. Um, Near Dark is a very dear, good horror vampire movie. I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just getting that out there now. I see the looks on your faces. I don't care. <laughs> you know? This motherfucker. I really don't even care. I don't care how you guys feel. You be like, you know, even if one of y'all sitting over there like, man, Kawhi, what you give me this movie for, man? You know, whatever. That shit was hard fucking core. Okay, that little junk that we did last week with Cookbook with that uh, uh what was that Lost Boys? Lost Boys. You yeah. know that we tried to, you know, that's this Lost Boys. That was softcore vampire porn what? this right here is is rated r hardcore <laughs> shit okay <laughs> so be, before before we get throwing things at people and stuff like that let, let's do let's jump to imb imdb real quick it says a midwestern farm boy reluctantly becomes a member of the undead when a girl meets him turns out to be part of the band of southern vampires who roam the highways in stolen cars Part of his initiation includes a bloody assault in a hick bar. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah there, there's that. From This movie's from 1987, directed by Catherine Bigelow, which is kind of important. Um, written by Eric Red and Catherine Bigelow. Stars Adrian Pasadar, Pasdar, Jenny Wright, Lance Henriksen, and the, the late and great Bill Paxton. My brother P Cobb Webb over here is insinuating that Deb and I don't like the movie. Wonder Dial, what what'd you think? I actually enjoyed the movie. I don't know how far to go, but it was it was not not being a real big horror film fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it kind of made me watch it from a, a different lens, but I, I actually enjoyed it. And I I guess I was kind of looking for some of the um the the hidden messaging. Um but but yeah I thought it was I thought it was decent. Like I would, I would, I would watch that again. So I can see how you do it twice in a week, cowboy. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you want to catch me? It's, it's a lot to digest. I, times, I will. You know. Deb, you want to say anything, or, or you I'm want me to go? I'm waiting. Okay. Um, I, oh, I will wow. say what I, I will <laughs> say what I liked about the movie. It had a different run, a different spin on vampires. You know, you didn't see any vampire teeth. You didn't see any garlic. What's his name's gun had a cross on it, so crucifixes didn't didn't affect him or anything like that. So it was mm -hmm. a nice attempt. It was a really slow attempt. Slow attempt. Like at the slow. beginning, the, the the whole hitchhiker scene and all that, when just it just for her to bite him. It was like thirty minutes into the movie. It seemed like before things got going. I don't know. Maybe I'm. I'm just, you know, I, I believe we're all around the same age, and, and maybe I just got spoiled by by new movies and stuff like that that just jumped to it because we ain't got no attention span. But th that slow <laughs> that slow burn was, was 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 kind of a slow burn for me, man. It was, it was like making sun tea. It just it was a slow burn at the beginning. I agree. But now that you know it's a slow burn, it's it's fine. Let it burn. <laughs> One and down. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if you caught the episodes where where Deb, myself, and Cobweb, we have a, a moral brick wall that we can't get past. And this movie, I think. Okay, this is why the movie. I think this is why the movie, besides the slow burn, I think this is why it got to me. That whole part of when people get some kind of magic power or mystic power, are they going to be a vampire? And they're like, no, I can't kill. And they're going to turn down long life. 
they're going to turn down all the good they could do with their new powers just because they're afraid to just find some bad people go to death row and you know sneak some death row prisoners out one at a time or whatever to feed yourself there's a, there's well, there's moral ways to get around it interesting yeah that's no no but when you look at no. these vampires they weren't even killing that way they were killing with guns and knives yeah they didn't use because you know Here, here's the thing that wasn't here's even the thing. Vamp- vampirism the way they tra- the way they the way they did this was, and I always thought about it, it was different. They taught it, they treated it as it was like some type of an infection that they had, you know, that was curable. That's why the blood transfusion to get it all out, once they cycled the blood through, they was able to get rid of it. It didn't matter if it was your first kill, they thought it was their second kill. That infection of that vampire virus that was in them caused them to act that way. They didn't care. If they've been killing for so long as vampires, they don't give a shit. They just like killing. These jokers were straight crazy. They didn't care. You heard the one dude, he said he was fought in the Civil War. They started the fire in Chicago. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I caught that and caught that little Easter egg there. But, you know, um... they've been out there. They, these fools right here, this little this crew has been terrorizing the Midwest for hundreds of years. <laughs> riding up and down the highways just taking people out making them disappear so so this is what this is what i gotta say about that you know if you're a good person you get these powers or whatever you know it was easy to break them up two weeks into this he already tore them all up and and, and him and his little sister you know killed all of them off on the highway <laughs> so he could have just learned how to get rid of get rid of the the young kid the the, the kid that that had been a vampire forever you know that was the first weak link and then he could have turned them he could have turned them into doing good stuff with their powers i'm i'm just saying if there's any vampires out there listening (laughs) or if there's any any government organizations that you know need some shady stuff done you know give me some powers give me some money or whatever i'll do you know but just let me do some good stuff with it too i'm i'm i'll accept it that's what i'm saying Okay, okay. All right, now. All right, one to Dow. Okay. <laughs> you you got you have to understand this 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 debate question here. Okay, if you as Deb put it like this, if you were cornered by a vampire and he told you I could either turn you or kill you, what is gonna be your decision? I I I think at this moment I'd be on the turn me. Right, like yeah. I'm not necessarily trying to die. <laughs> no, I think I had to go. With the, Thank you. I think I had to go with the term me. Um, <laughs> hopefully, like when we hang up, I don't have to test that theory. But you never know. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, um, exactly what I'm saying. Hopefully, I am. You are a good enough person to keep that goodness in you, with whatever powers and all that you get to do good with it. And I, then if you're not, then you're gonna get it anyway. Some what you know. Yeah, I, I, yeah, like I, I found it interesting how, um, <laughs> you know, he, he kind of kept that wholesomeness, and I understand why it was important. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd like to think I'd be that same type of person, but I don't, I don't know. Like, there's already enough in me to lead me to believe that that's not how it pan out, but. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You in, you in, right? Let's let's go. Hey, I mean, you know, the history has shown. So I don't know. You, you know what I didn't understand about the movie? Was it? And, and I'm gonna go ahead and say my my opinion on it. I liked the movie. I did like the movie. There was a lot of things I didn't like the movie about about the movie, but. The main guy, he did make me mad. Lance Henriksen, the old man? No, the the main, um, the one that she turned and he didn't want to kill anybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me, the me. Caleb. Caleb. Yeah, Caleb. Caleb. Um, I didn't understand why he was okay with drinking her blood, but he didn't want to drink anybody else's blood. Because you're not a man. Yes, because he did not want to. Yeah, he did. He, he couldn't bring himself to actually to do the, the deed. The deed. Of, oh, of that's killing. 
That's not what I was insinuating. I, I was just oh, insinuating yeah. he was trying to get something else. And he was. Oh, yeah. Him. Yeah, but just. Is that why you know, she was dancing with the guy? He got all mad. Yeah, she was trying to make him jealous. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Brought that animal. And he was crazy. Yeah. So like, I'm going to kill you now. That's what she was trying to do, playing with his mind. Yeah, that was. That yeah. was and that, again, history has shown that that will cause men to kill. <laughs> Yeah, and it did actually. It got him. It got him fired up. Even yeah. with that hole in his belly, he still he got up ready to party. <laughs> you know. Exactly. That's a, that's a good point. No, I can't kill. No, I can't do this. Boom! Get shot in the stomach. No, I still can't do it. Guy dances with his girl. Okay, now it's on. <laughs> well, that's his. Well, that's his food supply. <laughs> you know, that's that's his. She still could have been his, his food supply. She just been somebody else's also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, our whole concept it, it was <laughs> um, it was primal. It was very primal. And I didn't like how all of a sudden him and his dad figured out a cure in the garage. In the garage, dad. Oh, it was beautiful. Dad. No, no, in, in, in the, the barn. Van. Yeah, in the. They were in the van. He was taking them home. And then he had all those bottles and everything in the van. And he was like, Dad, have you ever done a transfusion? And then, wow, have a cure for vampires. See, but the thing is, he was just like a, he was like a country boy. And he actually meant, can you fix my transmission in my Firebird that we got in the barn back there? <laughs> and his dad heard transfusion and they just got lucky. So, what, so you're trying to say that somebody just automatically just, you know what, what it was, Josh? Time and technology has finally caught up to where they can actually do that now. You, know, you can do a transfusion then, you know, in the barn? In 1987. And they could, who had the abilities really to do a transfusion? I could Anything past it. 1987 that was successful. Come on, they couldn't even get that junk right with Arthur Ashe. So I, what made you think oh, they were going to be able to get it right then? I could believe if it was like <laughs> oh, oh my God. Now, time. But this was in 1987. I, I, I don't think Deborah caught that. Wow. Oh, we, th there are some fine lines in horror movies, my brother. There are some fine lines that we've talked about here. But you had to bring Arthur Ashe's blood. And oh my God. It's getting hot in here. I tell you, my deodorant broke down 10 minutes ago. I'm, I'm like... <laughs> Look at how red my face is. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Deb didn't oh. hear it. Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna have to go old school on this one. One to dial on this podcast that, that Deb and oh. I used to be part of is a public <laughs> access TV show. Again. He's got the he's got to pull out the cobweb warning. <laughs> the thoughts and views portrayed by Cobweb do not necessarily represent the thoughts and views of Cast of the Pod and or any of the guest hosts or regular hosts <laughs> on today's episode. There you go. There you go. Appreciate it. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 felt, I felt my publicist calling in a second like dude you gotta get off of there <laughs> oh, oh, shit. okay so the people that haven't seen near dark i'm not gonna trash on the movie because it was it's not one of my favorite movies but it, it's all right so it starts off with a guy that, that meets this girl right and um he's give, trying to give her a ride home but she's acting all weird i wonder why she was acting weird was she trying to run away from the rest of the crew? No, it was, it was, it was bait. You know, it, trying to stand out. You know, just she was just doing her thing. That was her mind. That's game. what they do. Yeah, I, th mm -hmm. I thought she kind of actually liked them, so she was dealing with that to kill or not to kill. Maybe, maybe yeah. she was fighting her conscience. Is it the... Yeah, I, I think I think she actually kind of liked him from the from the discussion that they were having. So. So yeah, as it's as it's yeah. building up as it's building up real slow and I'm already hating on the movie as we're watching it, and she bites him on the neck, his truck don't work no more, and he's stumbling home, and his farmer dad and his little sister, who Deborah recognized as the, one of the little girls from Beaches. Yeah, she was the the best friend to Blossom, or yeah, she made me stop the movie the the IMDb Beaches. I'm like Deb, really. Well, because she looked familiar to me. And, I and she was in another movie was. that we was in. Some other movie we just saw. Now I'm going to have to look that up too. No, but, go, keep it going. Okay. <laughs> so I did like the scene. The very 1987 scene of the Winnebago just coming through the dirt. Just cutting through there. And then they just hijack them. And then turn around. 
and dad and little sister are running after the vehicle in in yeah. loose dirt, which is like running through sand or snow or something like that. Ain't gonna happen. It's something but, to be said yeah. for a Winnie Bagel power sliding too. Like there is something to be said. Like that was a cool scene to me. I, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. As a fan of as a fan of Winnie Bagels, I enjoyed that. I never knew it was Winnebago Tokyo Drift. <laughs> what? One of my favorite <laughs> Fast and Furious. So there goes the connection right there. All mm-hmm. we needed was Han. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that shit was hard. So then, then that inside, was total eighties right there. Very much, very much. Um, so in one season inside the Winnebago, I did like the scene where that they were showing that the driver had he was all covered up. He had the sunglass, the welding goggles on. And they kind of had everything taped up except a little slit right there on the front. And um, they're going to eat him. But then then, uh, May points out that um, she bit him and he had already turned. So now he's part of he's part of their it's not a coven. Witches are covens, right? What what is it for for vampires? Um, Den of den of yeah. This one was a gang. They yeah. A nineteen eighties, late eighties, cyberpunk, dirty South kind of vibe gang. Because yeah, they went from like from like cyberpunk to just like because Bill Paxton, he was all clean, had the bolo tie on when he picked up those two girls, and the next thing you know, he's in the the, the dirty the the (laughs) dirty leather jacket. I mean, vampires gotta have some kind of style. But there's his spurs on his. They had all little setups they wear they used to pick up they they prey, you know. He knew how to pick up the ladies and stuff like that, you know. The kid he knew how to prey on those people, you know, with the with the uh, the tire, you know, when he laid on the ground, act like he got hit by a car, you know. That's how so, he got all his victims. So in, in the crew, you got the old guy that's, that's just running everything, uh, Jesse Hooker, played by Lance Henriksen. Then you the got best. Joshua John Miller, who was Homer. H O M E R. Let me grab your nuts and then tell you you better say it right. That 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 that, bo- that bothered me. That, that, that bothered me a lot. He was. I, I kind of thought that was interesting, but I, in a strange way, I enjoyed it. Oh, I don't shit. know what that says about me. But <laughs> <laughs> then 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 they had May, which is the girlfriend for Caleb. Then they had Severin, who I was very excited when I saw the trailer when Cobweb when you first told me about this. It was like Bill Paxson. Bill Paxson is going to go loony. Yes. You know? And then also with Bill Paxton. And whenever I think of Bill Paxton, I don't think of Twister. I think of aliens. He's like, they're everywhere, man. They're around us. They're t- we're going to fucking die, man. That, you know, that that's the Bill Paxton I think of. Did y'all notice Diamondback who she is? No. Diamondback, Di- Diamondback is Jesse's girlfriend, right? Right. right. She's also Vasquez from Aliens, the tough chick with the the the, the big gun. She's also oh, the yeah. mom from Terminator Two that stabs old boy through the face with her her with the Terminator Two shiny arm. Yep. And she's also the Irish mom from Titanic that's reading the book to her kids as they go to sleep to drown. Yeah, she's kind of a morbid. She's 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 pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> She, she's she's yeah. like the, the chameleon of Hollywood. She's got, you know, all the different parts. But the cool thing is, so it, it was was her. She was Vasquez and Aliens. Then um Jesse. Well I'm, I'm getting to Jesse. Oh, sorry, sorry. Damn, damn. <laughs> Bill Paxton, who who I can't remember his character in, in Aliens. But then Lance Henriksen was Bishop, the cyber, the android in Aliens also. All three of them. Same year. 1987. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they were busy. That's, yeah, they were. That was around that time. And Aliens was so, so Aliens was so much a better movie than this one. I'm just going to say that. I'll throw that out there. Oh, Aliens. Yeah, come on. We're not even go there. All right. They got how many sequels? Come on. <laughs> so, you, you also forgot to talk about Homer. What about Homer? Homer, oh. we read. Homer is a half-brother? Half brother, step brother, I don't know how that works. To Jason Patrick, which is Michael from the Lost Boys from last episode. And it was in the same year. The same year. They were both in vampire movies in that household. Oh wow. Yeah. 
And it caught okay. my attention because we did Lost Boys last week. So I was like, oh, oh okay. Now we're doing yeah. this one. So I thought that was pretty Yeah, cool. this is this is like a little, we got a little vampire thing going on around here, Wonder Doll. I see. Sorry. <laughs> I see. <laughs> we can't help ourselves sometimes. <laughs> let, let me really ask can. you, let me ask you, Wonder Doll. Um, do you have a favorite part of this movie? Oddly enough, I think my favorite part was that entire um, kind of the, the the bar scene, but in particular um, when when he was walking across the bar, going to the uh, the owner of the bar. Mm-hmm. There was just something about the spurs and the the way the glass was breaking as he was kicking it that was interesting to me. I don't I don't know why, but I was watching like I don't know that a glass would really break like that if you kicked it, but. I also don't have those powers, so. But I, I thought that was just the, the way it was shot, and just kind of the the way that it looked to me was pretty cool. I, again, I don't know what that says about me, but I I thought that was probably the one of the scenes I enjoyed the most. I I think the the director or the writers, editors, whatever, would have that same same belief because they put that in a lot of the trailers. They had a couple of different trailers with it, and that scene of breaking the glass. Like mm-hmm. that, that is it's in there a lot. Cowboy, how about you, sir? What's your favorite part? Um, that whole, that whole, that whole bar thing, to me was hardcore. Um, I would say the um, the scene when they were trapped in the um, trapped in the uh, in, in the um, in the bungalow. hotel room. Yeah, in the bungalow, when they were trapped in the bungalow and they were trying to get out and they were all surrounded, you know, and they were all pissed off at him. And he just, and Caleb was like, I'm, a, I'm going for the van. And they was like, okay, <laughs> we got us for the day. He feel like dying. <laughs> you know, that was so hard to me. You know how he ran out there, the cops are still shooting at him and he's on fire and he's going to cops like wigging out, you know, you know, crash through, get your crew and you out. You know, that junk was, that was dope. Did, did that seem 18 ish to anybody else? Seem what? 18 ish? Yeah, it's going for the van. Get that. The van? Bro. The, the style of the Bro. van. I'm going to go back and edit that scene when he gets a van. I'm going to put the 18 theme on the dun 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 you know I'm gonna do it now, Cobweb, right? Yeah, I do, man. That's funny, dude. I didn't even think about that shit, but now you think when you say it, what it down, that shit is fucking hilarious, dude. And it was a, a black. That's stuck in my head for yeah, the rest it was of just my life when I nope. see that part. It was missing the spoiler and the red stripe. That's it. it That's just... it. But it was like the, almost the same van. Like I'm like, yo, that is the 18. Th- that this is a Mandela effect. Let's let's jump off of Near Dark for a second. I want to ask you, gentlemen. Because Deb and I have talked about this before, Mandela effect. Do y'all have y'all seen the eighteen van lately? Nah, mm, not not lately. I mean, I think I thought, I thought it was in high, and that was like the one of the best vehicles ever on earth. Yes, yes. I always I always wanted the eighteen van and then Kit from Knight Rider. If I had those two, that was I was good. But um, I don't mean to derail us. Go ahead. I asked this question before, and we don't have the answer now. Just let it bubble a little bit. What was the best? vehicle car motorcycle what have you in television history we don't have to answer it now just let it bubble okay okay before we end it we'll get to that we'll get to that optimus prime but we'll get to it in a little bit (laughs) god damn josh no but (laughs) no oh boom mandela effect mandela effect I remember as a kid, the 18 van being a black van with the red stripe and the red fin up on top. If you look at it now, it's gray and then a red stripe and then the black. What gray? Exactly. All the top of the van and the side of it, like a, like like more like half of the van is gray. And then the red stripe. Remember where the red stripe was? Everything above it is gray and everything under it is black. What the hell are you talking about? Did it, why, why would they screw that up? This, this, what, next thing you know, they're gonna be telling me that they changed Starsky and Hutch. Fuck that. <laughs> no, I, 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 rem- I swear, I thought the van was all black with a red stripe. 
It is all black. It was all black. No, it's not. It was all black. It, where the red, the every it's the same van. It's got the same stripe, but everything above it is gray, and the bottom and underneath is black. One of the Dow, you even got one of the Dow pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> he got up and left. Wait a second. Yeah, look at this shit. Look. That's yeah. definitely not what the van looked like. That's. That's how it is. You go back and look at the old episodes and all that is like that in the old episodes. That's some Mandela effect shit right there. You know what? I've seen, I, I think I've, I can't, <laughs> I can't right now. <laughs> wow. They playing tricks on this one to die. You know, man, wow. let, let me tell you, let me tell you why they changed in the 18 van. Okay. That's wow. the power of the 18 van is the, probably the most beautiful thing ever. When a bunch of guys, when a, you got a black guy driving around, uh, a van con complete with AK 47s, explosive landmines, and everything else, and he could never get pulled over by the police. <laughs> the, that right there <laughs> is a thing of beauty. That that van, that van, mm. that's why they keep changing the paint because they don't want you to find it. Okay. <laughs> I bought it. I bought it. I don't like the gray though. That that's really messing with me. Deborah, next time we pod like this, remind me to take my blood pressure medicine before. <laughs> we... Oh shit. You're okay, John. Yeah. You're good. No. Oh shit. <laughs> let's 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 go back to this wonderful near dark movie. <laughs> you want to went off topic. <laughs> he does have a point. Let's keep, yep. <sighs> Let's keep it going. I want to tell you what what I like. What was yeah? What was your favorite part, Deb? When um, when they were in the bar, and he uh, the guy like I think he hit him, and then uh, he hit Caleb, and then Caleb turned around and he like hit him back, and he flew against the pool table. It hit the pool table. And then Caleb was like, "Did I do that?" <laughs> well, because that's when the... like, he realized his his strength. And then everybody was laughing at him like, yes, you did that. And it, I mean, it looked legit. I mean, we, we know that we know how heavy pool tables are. And we know he didn't really knock it over, you know, throw it back the way he did. But um, it looked good. That, that was probably one of the most realistic parts of the movie. Yeah, yeah. that junk was hard. I, so, I got a question for you guys. All right. Um, At the end of the movie, I'm going to jump, jump right to the end. When... She was sitting there when she was um when he cured her, mm -hmm. and she was looking at her body and looking at herself. Do you think that she did he ask her did she want to be cured? No, she didn't. He didn't. And, and she did never she hinted want, in the movie. Think, right? Do you think that she was upset that she was cured? I'd be pissed. I don't think she was mad, but I think she was confused. Like she was like. How did you figure out how to cure vampires? And we've been vampires all our lives, like all this time. And you just cured it in the bar. How, how did you do that? Because none of them probably ever wanted to be cured. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> See, now nope. we're going back to that, that vicious cycle. <laughs> there we go again. <laughs> I mean, he saw, he I had a taste that, of the like, power. Medium arthritis. The what? I'm sorry, go ahead, Jack. No, what, what, what were you saying one down? I was just saying, I wonder if she had immediate arthritis. Like, she's ancient, right? <laughs> arthritis has got to be... She's like, uh. <laughs> right, like, you know. There's got to be some age-related ailments that come along with that cure, right? Yeah, Shit. yeah like, if they were hmm. to do that to Jesse, and he was, like... Well, they vampires and no, I'm, I'm, I'm no vampire expert or anything like that, but I'll just say they started aging from there. They didn't hold up all their age through all that time. They just, okay, I'll buy when, that. When, they, when they became vampires, they stopped aging. And then when they got cured in that broke ass barn, then they just started up again where they stopped. But I, I think she was okay with it because throughout she, she seemed to be in this, this inner turmoil of about. It, like from the time that they met a again, even having it, you know, to do him dirty at the start of the movie seemed like a, a conflict for her. Right. Maybe she was on her way out already mentally. 
I, yeah, I, if, if that's possible. If you can get sick of being super, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I've been great for too long. <laughs> <laughs> being, having that kind of strength can come in handy one day. I'm just going to say they were some dumbass vampires. Because if you've been around, he's, they've been around since, well, at least Jesse and um, his old lady. What's her name? Um, Diamondback. Um, Diamondback have Diamond been around back. that long. And they haven't invested in any kind of stocks or <laughs> they, there was no cryptocurrency back then or anything like that. And they're still just, they're just lazy ass vampires stealing cars and living day by day and all that. Killing with guns and knives. Yeah. I mean, if I'm a couple hundred years old. Even as, as however I am now, I'm, I'm gonna build something up. <laughs> yeah, that, that whole that whole thing with the killing with the guns and everything that bothers you, doesn't it? Yes, because they're vampires. You know, yeah, just tear somebody apart. No, you can't reach out. Sometimes you can't reach out. You got to reach out and touch people. You know. Yeah, that's why you don't need a gun. Yeah. I, what did you think about them using guns, Wonder Dow? It didn't bother me, but I, I also I'm not real vested in the, the vampire genre, so it, it didn't like there was no 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 point of contention for me. I, I was like, I just killing, you know what I mean? Like they they did some hand work as well. It wasn't all guns, right? I mean, you could yeah, yeah. That assume wait, that, that waitress um, he cut her. And... Yeah, so they they were there was some uh, some hand work in there as well. So it didn't bother me. No. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, Bill Paxton with the uh, Spurs. See, yeah, he had some skill with that. There, there, there was some. I, I want to. Oh, yeah. I'm like on Amazon right now looking for Spurs. Of, um, <laughs> like, I'm... <laughs> yeah, and then he gave it to old boy, and then he wanted it back. He he said, "I want my spur back." <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Dial, you know. Dem and I are down here in San Antonio, Texas. If you want, we can go down to the corner store. They got Spurs. In yeah. There. yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. I spent like seven weeks in san antonio my memories aren't the fondest i was in basic training so it wasn't exactly uh, what i wanted to be but eh. it's good old san antonio <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. was there was there any significance to that fly at the start of the movie that he killed because remember in was it in a bar when may said oh look there's a fly on the ceiling and remember caleb at the start of the movie, he kind of squashed a fly in his hand before he pulled up to the bar and kind of got into that little tussle with his friend before they saw May. I didn't even catch that. I didn't either. No. I Look thought at me being all, all, all movie-ish. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> now now we're going to have to go back and watch the movie, and then Deb and I are going to be like, that's amazing, the twist that the whole story went through. Just, we, we, oh. And it was the fly. I don't know. Like I didn't. I never put it together. I just remember him killing a fly at the start, and then in that, I think it was in the bar scene. They were like, "It was a fly on the ceiling." So. I remember. Right. I her can saying tell you. That. Okay. I remember her saying that, but I didn't. I thought she was just like, because it was like, wasn't it right before they killed the waitress, right? Yeah. Or so right after. And or so it was right in the it sequence. Was, just, was her just saying to look up so that way? I, I That's read, what I thought, but I didn't. I didn't pitch. I didn't catch the the beginning. I read all the notes and the the did you knows and all that on IMDb, but I'm I'm gonna have to do some more research on that because I mean, that's not that doesn't seem very random. That seems something done on purpose. Yeah. I don't know. I'd love to give you some very in depth thoughts on why, but I got nothing. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, he, he yeah, I was hoping one of you would tell me. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. So, Cobweb, was there anything Go that ahead. you didn't like about the movie? Yeah. Since you know the stuff that we don't like. I know. It's hard for me to think of what I didn't like about Dear Dark, because I, I did like I just The slow burn to me got me at first, you know, when I first saw it, you know. But then afterwards, it's kind of like, oh, okay. It just kind of build into it, and I just ignore it. Um, because it's just, once it kicks in, it just kicks in. I can't really think of nothing too much I really didn't care for really too bad. bad. The only person I really felt bad for 
is the freaking kid that survived the freaking uh, first attack at the barn. I mean, at the bar. You know, because his dumb ass went with the cops. What did he need to go in with them for? I was like, no, you dropped me off at home. There's no reason for me to be going out to go, to go identify these. Go back. You know, right. that, that right there to me, that kind of ticked me off. Because I'd have been like, no, you're leaving me here. You know, but no, he went out there and guess what happened? He ended up dead anyway. Well, first of all, you know? it's, it's movie police. Second of all, it's 80s movie police. It was even worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we forgot about that. We forgot about that. <laughs> We have a concept one to dial around here, you know, policing in the 80s was horrible. It was, it was bad I policing. Did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to put it off. Debra, 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 Debra. Mental I'm note. I'm trying. <laughs> so with the, the, the thing that kind of, I guess, I didn't care for the most, like the, the time they spent running through that field, like the, him initially, and then, you know, again with his sister towards the end before they snatched her up. Um, I, I understand why, but that just didn't, yeah, I, I felt like the little sister was just a little too, too dumb. Yep. Oh, I, yeah. I'm glad yeah. that you brought that up because when they snatched the sister, I remember they took off, and so Caleb was like running after the the car, and then if you they had a, a shot where it looked in front of the car, and you can still see him like he was he had already caught up to the car. He was like right there, and I was like On really, foot. and he was already he was not human. he was human already. He had already did his transfusion, so he was cured. I was like, how did he catch up to the car? And they yeah, they, they, it's his drill, and they got his sister. It's a drill. Okay. <laughs> how about it okay okay here's the thing okay the sister okay even the vampires here you know how i am about this one thing about any 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 of these movies mm -hmm. bad parenting okay yes, yes. that little girl should not have had her ass outside outside getting a coke on a 50 with a 50 cent on a 60 cent machine okay <laughs> even, <laughs> like, even even the <laughs> asshole vampires said who lets her kid out at four in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should have had her ass outside. At a you strange know? motel, anywhere, anywhere, four in the morning, but at a strange motel. And he was wide awake, too. So, you know, dad was wide awake. Yeah. Um, Wasn't like he was asleep. <laughs> well, they went and got his ass up. <laughs> you know? And this is our honest, second, you know? second bad parenting movie with Lance Henriksen in it, because he was in there in Pumpkinhead. Yes! Yes! He, he's just a bad parent. <laughs> he's a bad parent. He's a bad parent. Lance! Exactly. And yeah. he was chasing, he was, he was chasing for his son. He was trying to get his so son back. So this, this is the part I didn't like, that I really didn't like. They were kind of tired of um, Homer. You could tell everybody was done with Homer. They were they were mad at him complaining that he was a kid for a hundred yep. years or whatever, and they were all done with him. And they didn't want him around. You know they were trying to find some way to kind of get rid of him, but vampires aren't going to kill vampires, you know. And they finally get rid of him, and then that's when they were like, "Now we're mad. We're so mad. We're going to get ourselves blown up in the sun." In a slow motion station wagon, blown up in the sun. I, don't think I, I think was... that they really didn't have a cha a, a choice at that point when they at that they were all too far in. They were too far in, in, into it at that point. It was all or nothing. That's when you got you know, I thought about that. Swallow too. your pride and just go, just go. Come I back, don't track think if they later. which direction would have mattered if they would have went that they wouldn't have got burnt up by the sun. Well, why it wouldn't have mattered. Get, why didn't she get burnt up? He, he could, covered her with a jacket. Yeah, he covered her with a Kmart denim jacket. And you know, you burn. and it was it was the '80s. You know, there were holes in that jacket. That's why she burned. Ah, but they probably had all that <laughs> stuff that wasn't healthy, so it was deflecting the sun. You know, we, we, the '80s were rough. We, we had a lot of questionable materials then, so you know. Yeah, one doubt they can sit up and they can poke holes through these movies all day long, all day long. You let them get on a roll, man. You better have some butter. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> So, 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 well, especially it, that, when it comes to vampires. That same scene that made me mad was 
when when Homer blows up, you see the state, and this is just technical editing that, that, that's pissing me off. Oh man! So the the <laughs> the station wagon is driving away. He blows up, and it's instantly turned around the other way, all the way back past his blown up body. See, I can get past that because they're vampires and they're fast. That, that so station can... <laughs> wagon wasn't that fast. It wasn't but a vampire station wagon. It, it, you never know. You, they could have like it could have been the vampire power that did it. Everybody but... from around that time either had or knows someone that had that ugly ass station wagon where you ride backwards <laughs> in the very back of it. The very it back that... to see his face out. Yeah, so you can watch yeah. it. <laughs> and and that station wagon, you're not doing no sharp U turn or anything like that. You're gonna have to go all the way out, come back all the way around. Yeah. There's no. Yeah, we honest. That's a that's a three pointer. It's true. Shit. Yeah, that was a big station wagon. Like I'm having flashbacks now. Wow, that was a huge station wagon. Yes. So here's a <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm sorry. We were so I'm from New Jersey originally, right? South Jersey. So we were we were going to the to the shore. To, oh, totally, but it was that station wagon. True story. We were going to the shore, right? And for some reason, my family was riding with another family whose name I won't name, just in case they happen to catch this, right? Okay. So we're, we're riding, and I'm in the back with their daughter, and the windows are down. The father's driving. He spits out the window. It comes in through the back window, and hits her <laughs> Oh snap! How is that possible? There was no aerodynamics to those. That happened, and it was that station wagon. It was like the the you know the the three seater with the the seats in the back that allow you to yeah. see coming. Yeah. It was that station wagon. The the K turn, that whole bit. Oh man, yeah, yep. Came out through the other windows. Like, yep. I mean, I swear on everything I love. So I believe you a hundred percent. As someone yeah. as a father that, that that did that that chewing tobacco shit, that not I'm not gonna say, you know maybe that's why this eye over here is all messed up. Oh I shit! I, I should have sat on the other side of the the station wagon, but I didn't. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious! Oh wow. So so we yeah. we, were, we were talking about getting older and all that because Cobweb's birthday is coming up. Okay. Right. And I want to ask both of you gentlemen and, and Deborah, you too. We, I was thinking about this today. Kids nowadays, I hate to sound like that old man. Oh, you kids don't know. But they will never understand the feeling of having to go on a long trip with the windows down, the wind hitting you for your face, and you stop at a gas station or stop at your stop or whatever. And you get off the, the, the car and your face feels numb because <laughs> the wind was hitting it all that time and your ears kind of going bad because you had that, that wind just blowing through your ear that whole time. The way that cars are now this, this morning when I was driving to work at the windows down, even though it was freezing out here and the wind's not coming in the same way like it did in those older cars. Y'all remember that feeling though? Half your face just had that. Oh yeah. 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 That's, that's, <laughs> you're taking it back, Josh. You are, you're taking it back to uh, what those pinwheels we used to have back in the day used to buy <laughs> and hang them out the side of the window. Oh, Pay, yeah. oh, 50 cents, know. 99 cents. See, yeah, but, man. but, but now, back. now half my face goes numb, and I'm checking my pulse on my watch and telling Deborah to give me some aspirin. You know. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Yeah. You okay? I'm good. I'm good. A couple right. times during this podcast, though. I just, just... <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, I'm, I'm not here. sure if I should laugh at that or not. And I'm just doing an uncomfortable fake smile and not. <laughs> just not. What is that? I was like, wait, what's going on? He was like, what did Cobweb oh, get man. me signed up into? <sighs> hey, he answered so, the email, so, you know? He answered the email. He, he was warned. <laughs> so I, I think we should get to the calculator of doom. What do y'all think? Oh, for sure, for sure. One to dial, we have a, a point score of zero being the worst, 10 being the best. And if you want to throw in a like a point five or a point whatever, feel free to. What would you give Near Dark, the 1987, I'll say Bill Paxton movie? I, I give it a solid seven, 7.5. I, I actually enjoyed it. Wow. 
Deb? I give it a six. As much as some of it made me mad, I did like the movie. So I give it a six. All right. Cobweb? Okay. I'm giving an eight. An eight? Damn. Yeah. I give it a 5.5. I was just going to say five, but I don't. Whoa! <laughs> oh man! Oh, divided by four, movie gets a six point seven five, almost a full seven. That's, that's okay. enjoyable. That, that's respectable. That's just about right. I can go with that. <laughs> I was that all like, bounces really out looking, again. I was really looking forward to watching this movie because you and and Cookbook talked so highly about it last week. And I think I'm that's really why shocked. I'm really, yeah. I, I think that's why I, I liked it, and I didn't even mind the slow, the slowness of it. But there was just too many things that I didn't like. That kind of. I think the hype killed it for me. I think so. The reason I say that is because because when we were looking for a list on on what we we're gonna compare Lost Boys to. A lot of mm-hmm. people had this movie as their number one, their number two on their list. And I'm like, damn, all these people, you know, had really good lists and then near dark, number one, near dark, number two. So I was expecting just straight up vampirism. Not, I mean, you can kind of mix this to almost like a mental crazy, like the crazies type movie. Once you take out the, like the shotgun blast and living through stuff like that, you can, mm-hmm. you, you can change it from a vampire movie with a couple of quick edits. And since it was so high on vampire list, I just expected more vampires. Is that maybe why it was so high though? Because it wasn't the obvious play on you know, vampirism. The, the the only real thing was the the transfer the, the, the transferring through the blood and the burning. That those were the only tropes that that kind of carried through it. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. It, it it treated it almost like it was an infection that they had. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's why the transfusion was able to work. You know, it was more or less that they were infected some kind of way for their blood or something like that, that they got something that caused them to do these type of things. You know, that's why they were all about the killing. It didn't matter about the murder. You know, they weren't vampires in a traditional sense. They were different ones. That's So you're that's saying the way to stop vampirism is to wear a mask and stay six feet apart. <laughs> Ooh. You just... Just cured vampirism. <laughs> I, 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 I'm gonna say I've been doing that for the past couple years, and to date, I'm vampire less. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 holds water. <laughs> you got it. You should do breaking right. news. Breaking news. Oh, okay. Chastel right. Found the cure for vampirism. One to dial, sir. Where I, I know you got some stuff going on Wednesdays. Where can we find all this? I knew this was coming, and I don't have my phone, so give me a second because I don't know it off the top of my head because that'd be too much. Like right. <laughs> 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 all right. So you asked where you can find this at, huh? Hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, for the the well, for me personally on Instagram, I am one dot. 2TO dot dial D I A L. Um, you can also find us at the dot black mavericks, and you can also find us at gray school G R Y S K L L the crew. Um, and on Wednesday nights, we do a podcast, gray school. Um, and you can find all, all things gray school at G R Y S K L L dot com. So I was going to ask if you don't mind why gray school. Um, I don't know. I don't know where we got that from. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> honestly, um, we're all kind of, I guess, middle-aged men at this point. Mm-hmm. So, um, th- it it really did play on the fact that you know we've all got some gray on the chin or the skull, um, and and then also. Um, with the the he man and, and the things that are associated with that, um, but um, yes, yeah, so that that's where it came from. And then 
we've kind of got plays on that. So we do some stuff with education, um, which we call gray school or grade school. Um, you know, so, um, and then uh, on Thursdays we do the, uh, we actually have an open forum where we um, do what we call gray space, um, where anybody can kind of join and, um, you know, it's just a check-in. Um, sometimes we record it. If somebody has something they want to talk about that they don't want recorded, we'll stop recording, but it's really just a opportunity for anybody who wants to hop in. You got something you want to discuss, you know, we kind of talk about it and just try to share and, and kind of, you know, break bread with each other on experiences and, and looking for ways to, um, to, to deal with life without resulting to, um, you know, what, what we traditionally want to do fight. So yeah. that's awesome. I didn't yeah, know about that real. aspect of gray school, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's a real tight cipher right there. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty decent. I actually said last week that I'm probably a better husband because of that group, and my wife hasn't let me live it down since she heard me say it. So, yeah, she probably should have held that one closer to the vest. Now I got this list of stuff to do. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll find something for you to do. Yes, sir. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, uh, you got any new? Uh, you know, this is one thing. I since I got you here, at one doubt. Okay. Uh, you're right, right. And a lot of it, the people that that have not had know you about your lyrical gift, <laughs> lyrical gift of gap. Um, tell me, tell me this. Who was the better MC, Slick Rick or Dougie Fresh? That's kind of rude. It's right? Slick Rick. As far as MCs go, I would say Slick Rick. As far as entertainers go, I might go Doug. But as far as MCs and being able to put together, I, I hate to say meaningful because that's kind of a relative term, but being able to always look at MCs as, hmm, what made them think of that? I don't have a lot of those moments when I listen to Doug. Slick Rick, you know, forever, I'm like, damn, what? Where, where did you come up with that at? So to me, I would say Slick Rick was the, the better MC. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks. Do you, do you, not, do you not agree, Cobweb? Because you're kind of like, mm -hmm. no, no, I agree 100%. Oh, okay. I, I got into a big debate about something, somebody with that today. Okay. They just, yeah, they just didn't, they, they, I guess they, they were like the Dougie Fresh's greatest, greatest fan. You know, I mean, they, Thought they were part of the Get Fresh crew or something, you know, but I mean, not to take anything away from Doug. Doug's a hell of an entertainer, but you know, I, I don't if I'm looking for some inspiration, I'm not going to Doug over Slick Rick if I'm, you know, trying to find something to spark a you know some sort of writing. I'm not going to Doug over Slick. If I'm trying to make a hook, I might go to Doug first. But you know, again, I think that's more entertainment than 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 MC those. Cool. That's and we all know I'm the, the, the law on that. So anybody that disagrees is just wrong. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Well, you agree, right? So the, both of us can't. Yeah, do I agree. I agree. I, I'm, I seeing, I'm seeing a trend. I'm seeing a trend from, from screen number three. Because last week we got that same kind of vibe going in, in, from Cookbook. Which vibe is that? That was the. The, anyone who disagrees with me, you know, it just it's not their fault. They're wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They just, they just, you know, it's like, I don't know. So many people think, um, I know hip hop back in the day, it was, it was a lot different. I know we just jump it off, but I just, I'll be quick. It was a lot different. You know, you had to really put your whole essence into everything, you know, to get noticed. You know, nowadays you don't really have to do all that. You know, you could just do like one part or something or whatever and you're hip hop. Back then you had to have the whole package. You know, back then if you, I would say in that era, early era, if you had a, a picture of an MC, you know, somebody that was, you know, that was the complete package of a, what a rapper was back in the early eighties, it was Dougie Fresh. You know, he had the look, he had the style, he had the dance. He had everything. He get the party going. If if you had a party, and he said Dougie Fresh was gonna be there. You better believe that the walls were gonna be strapped to the nine. You know. So it's always you know. There's a debate. I don't know. 
And again, again I, I, I think you have to talk about what you're going to that particular music or song for, though, right? I, again, as far as ability to entertain or move a crowd, which in essence is what an MC is, I'd go Doug. But if if Doug and Slick Rick were to battle, I'm going Slick Rick as far as word for word, lyric for lyric, I'm going Slick Rick. And I, I think that's, to me, when you speak about MC in the traditional sense, maybe not even the traditional sense, in the, in the sense of lyrics and, and writing songs, maybe not catchy songs, but songs with content, I got to go slick over, over Doug. Again, no knock to Doug. I'd love to have Dougie skills, Dougie skills. Dougie Fresh's skill set, <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it again, I, I think to your point, from a, a, a total package perspective, Doug all day, but lyrically, you know, I gotta go, I gotta go slick break. San Antonio being a metalhead town back in the day, it's not now, but back in the day, we had limited access to what we had for hip hop culture down here. Oh, we did have some, but not as, as, as vast as everywhere else. But um, this is a, a bad comparison for the two. Slick Rick was on the radio more here than Dougie Fresh was. But in my opinion, Dougie Fresh was more of an easy way to easy way to describe him was more of a commercial artist. More more of a I don't want to say pop because he wasn't pop where it was more technical with Slick Rick. And, and Dougie mm. Fresh was was more like I said. Even though Slick was on the radio more, Dougie Fresh to me was more of a radio performer. That's that's what I got throwing about that. To Cobb's point, right? Doug Doug is going to give you a party. Slick Rick is going to give you some party songs, but there's going to be some other stuff. And you might be like, yeah, I mean that song was dope on the album. You probably shouldn't be doing it tonight. Right. I think everything well, that Dougie's going to give you something all night long. <laughs> yeah, but Doug is going to give you some all night long. They they got a dog going. A, a hit song came off of his name for crying out loud. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, doing his dance and rapping about it made a hit song. So, yeah, isn't that what's the, what's this? Don't they have a, a dance still called the Dougie or something? Dougie, that's exactly yeah, what I'm talking right. about. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's yeah. What I'm talking about. So there you go, Deb. You know how to do the Dougie? <laughs> I, I can I try, but you're just gonna tell me to stop. So I I, I DJ a lot of I, I DJ probably twenty to twenty five weddings a year, right? Um that's a pretty popular song at weddings. I can say with absolute certainty, neither does the majority of the popular. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in that case then yes. <laughs> <laughs> you you have to take into consideration the way San Antonio's broke down and all that. Deborah Deborah's a, a, a West Side Mexican, and I am an East Side half mix, whatever I am, right? And, and we we've, we've got two dances we do. You know, you lean back, and then you throw your shoulders. This is the only two. That's all we got. That's it. That's really all you need. That, like, those those two dances, like. I don't want to let the cat out the bag, but like I'm a two-step dude. Oh. But when I really get into it, like I, I cover my, I, when I get here, it's <laughs> over. That it, it's a wrap. Once the hands, go, it's, it's over, yo. I'm two-step oh, all night, all night. Yeah. See, it's all about the hand movements. Once you get the hand movements going on in your dance moves, then you got something. You got something going on. That's all I'm yeah. saying. That's all I'm saying. I gotta drop back underneath 250 pounds before I can move my feet again. That just, you know, it just. That's what I say. Back in the day, <laughs> I was all dancing, but yeah. not now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Gravity I know. cured. Gravity <laughs> cured that for us. It just. Yeah. I miss my parachute suit. Suit. <laughs> suit. Yeah, I had a parachute flight suit, man. You are, day, you are not alone. <laughs> <laughs> Not I, I had a I had a brown crush velvet um Adidas tracksuit. Oh wow. Yeah. What, what do you mean you had? 
Yeah, it, it's walked off. <laughs> it's, it's Man, walked you off. ain't lying. I was just sitting here like, I wouldn't mind having that right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's what I said you had. <laughs> but, oh, shit. But uh, all right, I th- I th- I th- after after I think we should swing back to the movie there because if not, we're gonna we can go on for like two more hours. Oh, for sure. I feel bad. I, I don't know if we got one to die on here too long. Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. So yeah, whatever. <laughs> what albums you got behind you today, Top Web? Uh, Ciroc. Um, that's that uh, Sharecropper's Tour. And Morris Day and the Time Ice Cream Capsules. I was gonna say that building looks kind of familiar back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that album. That album was pretty hardcore, man. What do you think about what the, the the Prince Estate did to Morris Day recently? No, I didn't hear what what happened. They told him he couldn't use the name. He he couldn't be with the Time. Oh wow! And he came out. They, they it, sold it was, the rights. It, it was bad. It was bad. He came out and, and, and was talking about, I, I forgot what he was calling Prince, but he was calling him by another name. He was like, he never had a problem with it. He gave it to me with his blessings and all that. And now that he's gone and y'all got control of his money, you're trying to take money out of my pocket. He he, yeah. he, he started this grown ass man tour and all that where because he couldn't call it the time. Well, you know, he it was if you ever check that thing that they did it's called um, Tales from the Tour Bus and they talk about Morris Day in the time mm-hmm. you know and he like literally tells a story and he didn't have any you know prince put that whole thing together yeah it, it was his, that's his it baby was, it was everything the whole thing and all that stuff like that they even talked about how jerome came up with the mirror and everything else like that the whole thing it was it was all prince he was a bad man is that that tells from the tour bus that junk is hilarious where, you know, where is that at i've never where's that at oh you can probably find it out there um yeah. Yeah, it's an animated series by um, what's his name? Oh, I just forgot it. Um, Jeb, or something like that. Same guys. Oh, I can't remember. Tales remember. from the Tour Bus. I, I, I'll look it up. Mike Judge. Mike Judge. Yes, Mike from Judge. From Beavis okay. and Butthead. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's an animated series from him, and he basically okay. has these artists, and he animates it like the Beavis and Butthead series, and they okay. tell these stories about tour tour stories. It says it's you on know. Roku and Hulu. Yeah, it's on the Roku channel and Hulu. Oh yeah, it's hilarious. I do have. You know, a, they got I, one with James Brown. Yeah, I, I James do, Brown's a two-parter. I do have a <laughs> I do have a point to bring up real quick, as I'm really liking these different topic subject the di- topics that we got going on right now. It also goes to show how bad this movie was. <laughs> <laughs> that we completely left the genre all together. <laughs> oh, you were going there before. Oh before man, I am hitting. You see, it see, took I, me. It took me I'm a while to get slump. it because I was out, no, no, no. It took me a while to get there because I was doing that big ass station wagon you turned to get to it. <laughs> oh, Wonder Dow, you got excuse, man. I've been a. I've been in a slump lately. I, I, I've. I've been picking bad movies for no apparent reason at all. No, 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 no. The, 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 you had a. You've been this... picking bad movies because you got bad taste in movies. <laughs> 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 There's a reason. No, no, you pick some gems, some yes. really, really good ones. Again, <laughs> as a person that is not a fan of the genre, I I enjoyed the movie. Um, so I I don't think it was that bad. I I actually enjoyed. Like I was actually I'm a. See if my wife will watch this. I doubt she will, but like, I enjoyed it. It was like, I, you know, not bad. And that the slow burn at the start didn't really bother me. I, again, I didn't know where it was going, but I just like, all right, character development. I'll go yeah, ahead. For, for, for me, it was the it was the hype, the, the the overhype that that got to me, and then the me being spoiled by Marvel movies, just you know, just rush rush into it. Deb, what, what was one of the movies that we can actually say was bad that Cobweb picked? Do you remember? Red Snow. Red, Red Snow was bad. <laughs> Red Snow was really bad. I think that one's the worst. <laughs> no. We can't go. No. We can't go lower than Red Snow. No, the uh um was the one uh Spider Night, Deadly Night 2? No. No, Red that, Snow that was worse. This, <laughs> 
<laughs> See, that movie was so bad, they knew it was bad. That's what made it good. That's good as since, since Snow. <laughs> Red Snow was. <sighs> no, Red you Snow know, was... you know what was a bad movie? The Woman. The Woman was bad. Okay, that was a bad one. It was. <laughs> I've had some I've had some clunkers. <laughs> I've had some clunkers. Okay. All right. So our dogs are going crazy. I don't know if y'all can hear them in the the other room over there. But so I I, I think that's a, the the note for us to to cut it a little short there. Yep. All right. They're all standing at the door. All right, Wonder Doll, thanks again for joining us here at Cast of the Pod. We appreciate you. Hopefully, you come back soon. Hopefully, we haven't run you off. Oh, nah, man. Hey, just let me know. I enjoyed it. Give me a reason to watch a movie. So, yeah, just let me know. Awesome. Awesome. I, you, I can come in and add a bunch of useless information to anything you have. So, <laughs> <laughs> sounds good so, to me. When you said earlier, I just have a question. When you said earlier that this is not your, your, your genre, is it horror or just vampires in general? I, I think both. I, I'm I'm weird about movies, like even Marvel movies. Like I don't, I was not a comic book fan. So like when I watch movies, I'm just watching. Like it was a good movie. And people are like, but do you not understand? Like, nah, I didn't understand any of that. I just like, oh wow, look what he did. So I'm always watching from his very innocent and uninformed perspective. So it's like it was a good movie or it wasn't for me. Yeah. I'm not proud of that. It's just the reality. So sometimes that's like. The good thing, cause like the best way to us, do it. Yeah. With with us, we look into movies too much, and sometimes it kills it. Sometimes we don't get to enjoy it because yeah, we're, we're looking too deep into other stuff. And then cut with yeah, just like us. you did with Near Dark. <laughs> <laughs> Near Dark shouldn't even be a vampire. Look, movie. look, look, look. <laughs> I'm gonna compare r- r- real quick. I I know we were we were gonna end it here, but I'm gonna compare Near Dark to that Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie. You want to know why? <laughs> why? Have you have all of y'all seen the jo- that Joker movie? I, I haven't seen it. So the Joker movie, as a Joker Batman movie, sucks. It's bad. But if you just <laughs> look at Cobweb's face, but if you just watch it, if you take all the Batman references out, you take all the Joker references. <laughs> why are you just, You gotta hear this part. Put your headphones back on, man. I, I, I'm gonna say what's good about it. Is, is this the equivalent of a filibuster? Is this... <laughs> look, 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 look. If you, you take if you take all the DC stuff out of it, if you take all the Batman stuff out of it, it's a good movie. It's a good movie talking about emotional trauma and and, and, and issues and stuff like that. It's a good movie. But somebody came up to Warner Brothers with this movie and they were like Let's show this this guy that has this mental issue, this emotional issue. Let's show how bad it is and, and how the society's treating him wrong and how everything was done wrong. And this is how he led to it. And then the, the, the executive producer of Warner Brothers was like, I like it. It's good. It's got some good stuff to it. But what if he's the Joker? And they just threw the Joker name on it. They threw a couple of Batman references into it. They took a good movie that wasn't going to make that much money because it had a point. It had it, it showed problems, you know, but they just threw other shit in it. That's this movie. No, because because <laughs> because they were because it's not a vampire movie. They were just going to show this 80s cyberpunk street gang, whatever type movie in there. And the director's like, I like it. We can do that. We just made aliens. So we've got these actors right here. But how about we make the vampires? And they're like, but, but, but sir, we just recorded 75% of the movie. They ain't no vampire teeth or nothing like that. We'll just set a couple of them on fire and we'll say they're vampires. <laughs> That's hey, what happened with this movie. Hey, at least Red Snow, there was a bat in it. Yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> and teeth. you could tell that the, <laughs> you could tell that the guy was a vampire. They went to Hot Topic and <laughs> bought some goth kid teeth so you could see they're vampires. Cowboy hates us right now. I think this is the end of Castle of the Pod. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, if I was on the last episode, I'm proud. So. It's like, I mean, it's it's like that episode of Jones TV Rats with the leaders of the new school. <laughs> <laughs>
Right. right. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> One to oh, doubt. Th- thank you for being on today for uh, uh, an episode that had a many firsts and apparently a couple of lasts. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure, man. Thank y'all for having me, man. That was, that was enjoyable. I appreciate it. Awesome, awesome. Cowboy, have anything you want to throw in there before we end? Oh man, thanks you guys uh, for tuning yeah. in for another one. And let's just keep the same energy, baby. Oh, and don't forget the uh, Patreon. Sign up. We're giving say. away that uh, yes, that Nipsey Hustle vinyl album for the next thirty days. Whoever signs up for that Patreon is on any tier is going to automatically be entered in the contest to win the Nipsey Hustle vinyl uh, uh, album. Even the two dollar so, t- tier. Yes, the two dollar tier. You sign, wow. Two dollar tier. If you sign up for the two dollar tier, whatever tier you sign up for within the next thirty days, you are automatically entered to win the contest. That's almost which is the cheaper vinyl than record. getting into a raffle when you get a barbecue plate. Just two dollars. I mean, you do two dollars. Don't even come back next month if you don't want to, but that still gets you this that man. But I mean, yeah. hopefully they do come back. I mean, it's just let's see. Yeah. All right, y'all. So they until will. next time, I'm Josh. Hey, I'm Cobweb. Hey, I'm Deb. Went to die. We appreciate you, and uh, you have been warned. Peace. It's that soul music right here, yo. Uh. Uh, uh uh-huh, make you wanna clap. World provided you, yeah. (laughs) Black Sean, I see you. Black Mavericks, yeah. Yo, yo, uh. Man, I feel proud living in my brown skin. Look in the mirror, gave myself a proud grin. Uh-huh. That's how my day begins. He flip a simple, not overly complicated, like a dealer instrumental. While look at my son's smile, like wow, wow. this is the life I'm giving. Black joy is a feeling that I will always cherish. Got it on the internet, seeing all my purchases. Proud that my bank account supporting black businesses. Support, love is love, love to see it when my people rock it. Yeah. Love to see my people share the secret stock options. I still don't understand it. But I do find peace when my brothers explain it. The black dollar mighty powerful. I get it now. Fact. It's enough to go around when the hustle is supported by our people. Huh? This is a new day. I got a girl plus the Oval Office baby green with chunks of pearls. Sisters that be struggling around the way. And for my brothers that struggle in this world today, we believe in you. Keep pushing. Stick together, y'all. And keep it moving. For my sisters holding it down from around the way. And for my brothers holding it down in this world today, we believe in you. Keep pushing. Stick together and keep it moving. Uh. Uh, in this season, Word. but my team ain't no competing. Give a pound and hold my man down. The only goal to make sure that everybody in the fam is eating. I know now there's all the truth, but then hyperbole. Not a fan of the text, I'd rather tell it to you verbally. Peace, black. How you feel? Hope your health is great. Both the physical and the status of your mental state. Huh. We all believe in the grind, but things change and farmer whips the only way to be shine. I got mine, so sound mad hypocritical. The catch, I also have my daughter investing with me in crypto. Still finding my lane, every cent I spent. On average, my ROI around 15%. Take my son to the park, do his letters and math. At five, has an account, he's learning credit and cash. I'm trying to do more than maintain. Put my kids on the path to grab the world by the reins. Each one, teach one, the only way to will grow. So it's truly part of my duty to share the things that I know each one teach one the only way that will grow is truly part of my duty to share the things that I know each one teach one the only way we grow is truly part of my duty to share support my people that be struggling around the way and for my brothers that struggle in this world today we believe in you keep pushing stick together and keep it moving for my sisters holding it down from around the way And for my brothers holding it down in this world today We believe in you, keep pushing Stick together and keep it moving uh. Stick together y'all, keep it moving Stick together y'all, keep it moving Stick together y'all, and keep it moving Stick together y'all, and keep it moving Stick together y'all, keep it moving